Are you guys ever playing a match of Tekken and your low gets blocked or you eat the first launcher and you're in the air contemplating your life thinking that this round is over, I've already lost? Well, Tekken 8 is a game where despite all the volatility and the randomness and the guessing, you have more interactions with your opponent before a round is over. You have gray health, combos do less damage, low parries aren't as scary, you can't get counter hit launched as easily, so uh, you actually have a lot more chances to make a comeback than you might think. And what I have for you today are two pro matches that really illustrate this concept. We have Arslan Ash versus Pat Loares, and we have Riot versus Kudan. So it'll be timestamped below, but uh, these matches were fantastic examples, literally today, uh, October 5th, of the ability to make a comeback, even when the rounds look extremely ugly, when the health bars are literally one pixel to a full life bar. Uh, there'll be timestamps below, so jump to either match if you like. Uh, but I think both of these matches are really, really instructive. And I saw them, like, briefly live, but I didn't, like, lock in and, like, analyze it. So I think this is a great opportunity to do that. So Kudans has been a Devil Jin player since, I think, Tekken 5 DR, maybe even before. And uh, Ryef, uh kind of started making waves in the end of Tekken 7. Saudi Arabian player, and he's kind of crazy. Like, he will do tons of strings. He will do... Uh, he just throws mo the move list at you. So... Uh, and Jin is a much stronger character than Devil Jin in this game, so Kudans has his work cut out for him. Parry on the first hit, but he finishes the string. Hell sweep whiffs, and now Rife gets the wall pressure. Rife is so good at using Jin's new tools at the wall, like the different dive kicks to get like chip damage and apply plus frame uh, pressure. Up forward two, dodges sideways. Kudans delays his getup and dodges the one plus two. He tries to do the flyback move, Devil Jin's flyback, but Jin's one plus two catches him the second time. Back to one from Ryef. Laser Scraper. That's Devil Jin's main like mid tracking string option. It doesn't do a ton of damage uh, or knock down, but it's really, really nice for tracking both sidesteps. Roll Spring Kick. Tons of Laser Scraper. The back forward two. Heat Burst. Back dashing and then Ryef snipes Devil Jin out of the air with a forward forward two. Down two, no reaction. A bit harder to react to on PS5 setups because they're a bit laggier. Parry into Can Can. Ryef also very skilled at using parry. His reactions are really cracked. So he has really good low reactions and his parries are really on point. Forward forward two, heat engage. Big dive kick, big dive kick again. The chip damage is adding up. Down back four, down four, two four, perfect. Three oh. Good lord, man. Kudan's a quick 3-0. We e even though it seems really ugly, a lot of legacy Tekken players are good at collecting data even if they eat like a nasty 3-0. So it, it's never... It, it may look really bad, and it's obviously a scary position to be in in a first to two, uh, but Kudan's is able to adjust. Down 4-2, counter hit in a Morning Crow. Trading lows over and over. Down 2, again, no reaction. Power crushing the second dive kick. Spring kick. Rife is in heat. So it's Kudan's 2-4. Down back 4. The backswing blow does not hit. And Rife has won 4 rounds straight. Kudan's, if he's going to figure something out, it better be time now. Nice block on the down 2. Laser scraper tracking. Laser scraper tracking. There it is again. He's gotten half HP off of Laser Scraper. I think that was an attempted Hell Sweep, but he messed up and got a regular down 4. Laser Scraper again. Finishing it this time. Rife swung. Nice block on the uh, forward forward three. Laser Scraper again. He's gotten all this HP off of Laser Scraper. One down back two, and then that counter hit Steel Pedal at the end. Okay, trade. So no heat engage, but then Rife just simply throws another Demon Paw again. Tons of down back four. Back one, two. Nice punish. Devil Jin goes into heat. He knows he has to make something happen. Gets floated out of the air. Not the way you want to use your heat gauge. <laughs> Omen stance, nothing. Whiff down two, and finally Devil Jin lands a Hell Sweep. Devil Jin is very Hell Sweep dependent in this game. Forward forward two, heat dash, awkward sidewall, but Kudans is able to salvage a lot of hits. Full charge Chidori, Hell Sweep blocked. Oh, tip range dive kick blocking a crucial Hell Sweep. Rage Art, Devil Jin's Rage Art is inconsistent, but that one, it hits there. There are many situations where Devil Jin's Rage Art will straight up whiff. Uh, there's another bug right now where Devil, the timer, the in-game timer will keep going while Devil Jin's Rage Art animation is playing, so you can lose the game on time as Devil Jin, even if you land at a Rage Art. I'm talking once the cutscene is playing, not like the initial windup. What the heck just happened there? Stonehead does not break the floor. 
Forward four, mini flow. Up forward four. Kudan's laser scraper again. This time he eats a punish because he doesn't finish it. Power crush armor. That's a redundant. Power crush armor is redundant. Eat burst. It. Oh, he sidestepped the forward forward three, but Ryf extended the string. Ryf tried to parry, so he doesn't get a big punish there. Just a 2-1. Kudan's blocking. No more heat. Forward forward three blocked. Now Ryf has a, what, three quarters of a heat gauge to try and run away with this round. 2-4 punish. Heat smash. Electric! Oh my goodness! If you watch Kudan's, you'll know that when he throws an electric, it always hits. His electrics only hit. Can you believe that? Let's look at, he's gonna win this round, right? He's dead. Let's look at a couple interactions that I missed before we go on. There was something weird that happened at the start of this round, like they flew past each other. Down forward two attempted. Oh, okay. So I thought they like collided, but they didn't. Uh, Devil Jin's move just straight up flew by uh, Ryef. And Ryef didn't realign. That, that's the weirdest. That's like a tag one interaction. Tekken tag one. If you ever watch Tekken tag one gameplay, the characters always fly by each other. How did this happen? They fly by each other and they're like facing the wrong axis. So Ryef did a sidestep right as Kudan's through this attack. Sidestep right duck. So Devil Jin is like locked on to that initial axis and he's just flying far away. But it's weird as the while standing 4-4 completely missed too. And then let's look at this electric. This electric was disgusting, man. He's out of heat. Ugly situation. He blocks the heat smash, I believe, right? And then at this pushback range. Oh. Ryef had to run up to apply more pressure, right? Because he's so far away. So he runs up, pauses, and then does a back 2-1. Just a very slight pause. And in that pause, Kudans throws his electric. And it blows up Ryef's run-up attack, right? A concept that you'll see in a lot of high-level Tekken is... When you have to clo like close the gap to attack somebody, your attack is inherently slower, right? Because you had to spend the time running up. So that's how a lot of good players will find counter hits, is they'll backdash and then read that you want to attack them, but you have to move forward first. A trade on down back two and down two, very favorable for Jin. Jin got way more damage out of that. Wave dash, wave dash, and then super delayed hell sweep. This is another way you can get your mix-ups to hit a bit more as a Mishima, is just if your opponent is respecting your moves and just blocking, you can play with your timing a bit. At lower levels, it doesn't work that well because your opponent will just keep mashing. That's when you'll want to find like electrics and demon paws. Oh, he tried to backswing blow and got hit with a 1 plus 2 again. But yeah, because at these higher levels, people are blocking and the Mishima is reading that the opponent's blocking, they can do multiple wave dashes. That's why that will work. 1-1-2 one, one, finishes. That's launch punishable. That's really scary to do, but uh, Devil Jin, uh, if he has a good read, can throw that out and just keep the momentum going. Power crush. Absorbed. Generic down four. Oh, counter hit down two from Jin. That's good at all levels, man. Like, people will say it's reactable, but when you're worried about everything else going on in the game, it's easy to miss that reaction. Back two. Two one. E getting chipped away. Backswing blow hits! Oh, he did a partial charge because he knew Ryaf would try to interrupt. Kudan's one to one. Electric hits again. Oh my god. There's something cool about you never see an electric until it's about to hit. Kudan's did that option to try to hit him on the ground, but he flew far away. That was silly looking. Nice block while standing 4 4. Laser Scraper gets interrupted by uh, down jab. Hell sweep. Ugh, it's too slow. He tried to realign. Back to three launch, and Kudans is one round away from losing four rounds straight to making an insane adjustment. Just a couple. Oh, didn't get hit that electric though. Generic down four, doing a lot of work to get around Jin's faster pokes. Sidestep heat burst because he did it later. His will win. Low parry. All right, while standing three. Nice com. I was gonna say nice combo. <laughs> VDX combo. 2-1. Nice block! Oh, I don't think he was ready for it. That's why you didn't see a punish. 4-2-3. Uh-oh, he got counter hit. Ooh. Dive kick. This is Ryaf's happy place. He's so good at using this wall position. Dive kick. Dive kick again. Now he does the mid dive kick. The first two were highs. Here's a high one again. Down back four. Down four. Oh my god. You have to guess the high dive kick and duck. But if you eat the mid one, you take a ton of damage because he gets a free follow-up right here. The counter hit down two. It's looking incredibly ugly for Kudans. 
Half HP, wall position ugly. Dive kick hits again. In rage, he can only survive one more hit. Sidestep, heat burst. Ryaf's in heat now. Jin is holding him at gunpoint. They traded. He's running in. Heat smash from Devil Jin. Okay, he's healing a little bit, but it's still one heat smash from Jin and it's over. He blocked it. One hit and he's dead. Oh, he blocked it. Oh, he hit the hell sweep. And if the rage art doesn't drop, he... What a comeback. Can you believe that comeback? <laughs> Look at this. Look at the HP situation. This is how ugly it was. Look at the situation. Right? There's this trade. And then there's this heat burst. So look at the HP here. How do you think he's going to come back from this? You would not believe how he did it. 1-1-2, one, one, he finished it. He would have died if he stopped because Ryav sidestepped it. Ryav sidestepped the 1-1 one, one and went for a whiff punish. So Kudan's rips the second one and they trade. They trade, okay? Kudan's dashes up at him and just hits a raw heat smash, which is insane. But what's crazy is not just the block that saves his life, which is like right, what, here? No, 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 he blocks mid, then he blocks low. This saves his life. And then watch how he hits this hell sweep. Watch how he hits this hell sweep, okay, you ready? He runs up, and Jin is sidewalking to the left. If he hell swept immediately, it would have whiffed. So with one pixel, well, not one pixel, he could survive like maybe two hits. With his life in the balance, he keeps running forward to land this hell sweep, right? All Ryaf had to do was hit a button, but Kudan's read that he was going to sidewalk. So to counter the sidewalk, he sprints forward. And this extra forward dash that Kudans did right here is the reason why this Hell Sweep hits, right? That's the reason this hits. Because if he just Hell Sweeps right here, Ryaf dodges it right here, an immediate Hell Sweep. And then a astute chatter pointed out that this counter hit, uh, this hit spark here means Ryaf actually pressed, right? Ryaf actually pressed there. He made a decisive, immediate timing read to sidewalk and then press a button. And Kudans countered it by delaying his timing with the forward dash. Incredible comeback. It's never over. It was so ugly. But now we have the match that has Lily trending on Twitter. If you jumped here from the timestamp, welcome back. We're a little sad you skipped the match before. Paloars is a Thai Lily main who is super, super strong. Like incredibly strong i studied a lot of pat loire's matches when i was um maining lily aggressively in tournaments and uh it's really cool to watch him play he's fighting arslan ash uh nina incredibly strong small tech and i actually think nina is pretty good uh at like maintaining the pace against lily so i'm curious to see how pat loire's decides to play this right now they've gone pretty even uh qcf 3 plus 4 you can see just missed the second hit missed nina sidewalks the heat burst and is going to get a nasty combo here yeah, I don't know if I could decisively call the match in Nina's favor. Wow, and a stray 3-2 turns this into a combo. Paloars has also really creative combos here. Back 2-1. One, 1-2 one, one, wall carry. Double feisty rabbit down 3. It, I thought he was going to lose this round. Look at this combo. Look at this combo here. Sorry, I messed up the text box here. Let me go back. Look at this combo. I thought he was going to lose. Look at this combo. This is a very unconventional Lily. So what happened here is... Arslan Heat Burst doesn't get the right, like, he, he didn't convert the combo. He probably could have killed here if he converted the combo properly, right? But he did a sidestep one before doing the Heat Burst. I'm not sure what the right thing to do is here, but it wasn't that. So Pat Loar stands up, Nina down jabs, and Pat Loar just rips the 3-1. And because Arslan Ash is stepping to the right, he gets clipped. Heat Dash combo here. He does a down forward two, back turn three, four, back one... This is the tailspin. Sidestep to the right to align to the wall. Back to one. One, two. That was a crouch cancel. She had to tap up to get out of the little crouch dash to get that. And then a dash block down three. Very, very well played from Paloars. Nice optimization to get to the wall and set up that situation. One, one. Arslan ducks under. Doesn't get a big punish. Just a small down jab while standing four. Low poke, trade with Lily's while standing four, forward, forward, four, root of evil, and then a grab from back turn to beat the heat burst or the armor. Both options. One plus two throw, Arthur's gonna break those. Three plus four. 
Heat burst for heat burst. The later one wins. Standing three. One, two. Interrupt. One, two, four. Arslan misses the parry on the second hit of 3-1 and gets blown up. Two rounds. Two rounds straight. Forward, forward, four is reactable. However, if you're reacting to Lily's forward, forward, four, you are opening yourself up to her other mids because she can do reasonable mix-ups with dash, down, forward, three, forward, four, one plus two. There are tons of options she can do. So, yes, forward, forward, four is reactable, but you're exposing yourself to the other mids. So, I would say it's... It's a choice whether you want to react to it or not. Pat Loire is recognizing he only has two hit oh, cross up, two wall hits to do that specific combo. Oh, never mind. Nina gets a nice punish. Oh my god, in heat, the while standing one punish is disgusting. The rage art hits, this is gonna kill. Let's look at this little situation here. Pat Loire gets this really cool combo. Nice duck launch on the string. Okay, this is insane. You went. I'm sorry, we have to do the combo one more time. Crouch cancel down forward one, back two one. Full, cr oh sorry, tornado, crouch dash, crouch, full crouch down forward one. This is like pretty technical stuff. But because he got a low wall splat, he doesn't get the three hit wall combo you normally get. He only gets two hits. That's why he does this down jab and then this full crouch move. And then he gets a cross up with a double feisty rabbit. Arslan blocks the low. That's the Arslan factor and then wins the round off of that. But the combo optimization is really, really nice to see. The wall awareness is good. Paloars, maybe he's in his home nation. Maybe he's always this confident, but he's looking extremely solid. Nice block from Arslan. He's putting in a lot of low blocks. Uh, Pat Loars is. You can see in his movement, he's just he's doing like steady ducks. It's not like Korean backdashing. Nice duck underneath the guns. Crouch cancel down forward one again. Back to one. Heat burst. These combos are new. I gotta steal these. Running three. Ooh, ooh, in the rear. But Arslan didn't launch her. He tried to three one. Uh oh, divine step over the top. This combo is crazy. Nina's head is towards her, so she has to do this ender. Guaranteed back turn down two. Three one on a delay timing to kill him. Look at that. I thought he was dead here, but Arslan didn't launch. And she eats the heat burst. And the down forward one gets evaded by the divine step. And can you believe that he turns this into a win? Look at this dash block, delay timing a little bit, convince Arslan I'm just gonna chill, and then the 3-1 comes and counter hits him. What did Arslan try to do? I think he tried to dash jab. It looked very innocent, like a dash jab, pretty fast, but Pat Loire's timing was so clutch here. That was really, really incredible. Solid, solid game one. The second, uh, second game is on Midnight Siege. Explosive wall is pretty nasty. I think uh, Nina, especially with that while standing punish, gets a lot out of the explosive wall. We'll see. Trading pokes for pokes. Forward, forward, three plus four gets power crushed through, and Nina heals all the damage she just took. Back swing blow. That was a throw break. Down jab. Sidestep one plus two. Palawars is playing so fast. Any interaction that goes wrong, he doesn't slow down, and I kind of love that game speed. Down one gets counter hit by Nina. Jab trading with the guns. Heat burst. Down four. Oh, QCF 1-4. 3-1. Arslan misses the pun the parry again. You can parry here. That combo's gonna kill. This situation, if you guys fight Lily, pay attention here. This is really important. If you block the first hit of standing three, you can punch parry the second hit. But Arslan doesn't do it. Maybe he got caught moving, maybe he was late on the parry input, but it cost him his life two times. Earlier in game one and then the, the uh, earlier here too. Down 4-2, fantastic timing on uh, catching Lily's 3 plus 4 out of the air. Down back 2, heat burst, douche, 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 douche. No wall explosion because it's a low wall hit. Tons of chip damage coming through while standing 4 counter hit. Insane Nina pressure. Lily has all great health. Divine Step completely whiffs and a perfect for Arslan Ash. And it looks like he could have done a tornado to put her back towards the wall. I've never seen that. Counter hit jab. Sidestep four. Down two completely whiffs. Wow, but Arslan is not ready to whiff punish. One, two, counter hit. Nina's pokes are dominating Lily here. Kind of hard to sidestep around them too. Back two, 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 counter hit. Disgusting. That's the main reason it's scary to sidestep around Nina's pokes because of that homing 12 frame high, high, high string. 
3 plus 4, Heat Smash, delays the down 3 plus 4 with the crouch. That's how Lily can hide it, so it's harder to react to, but Arslan is still ready. What Lily can do here uh, is she can crouch first, and it gives her a good, like, it hides the reactability of the sweep. Because she can crouch and then do her back turn 1 plus 2, the mid. But Pat Loire's delayed it so long that Arslan just reacted and ducked. The other thing I want to look at, I mentioned briefly that Arslan had this crazy combo set up here that didn't come into fruition. Because he already killed her. But look what he was going to do. He was going to run underneath her with this and push Lily back towards the wall and get a wall combo. So there was some hidden tech here we didn't get to see. But that was really, really cool. Like, so, if you're a Nina player, keep an eye out for this. You get a back turn launch here with that string. You could do a, I think it's a geyser cannon again or something, and it will swap sides. Anyways, after the sweep is blocked, uh, Arslan takes the round. And now, uh, Arslan seems to be finding his footing. Two to one. He's a, you know, a world-class player for multiple years, for multiple Tekkens. He knows what he's doing. He's got insane composure. How can Pat Loares find an avenue to victory? QCF 3 plus 4 will help, but the Root of Evil gets blocked. 1-1. One, one. Back turn 3 plus 4, down 2. Grab to beat the Power Crush. Pat Loares has a good sense of when, oh, wow, of when Arsenal wants to Power Crush, and then hits a 3-1. 4-4, 3 plus 4. Rage Art, no, this is blocked. A little antsy. Wow, how did this 3-1 hit earlier? How did this 3-1 hit? But we're on the final round. We can look at that later. Forward 3 plus 4. Palawars is picking confident duck spots. Like, these are concrete ducks happening, but he gets floated out of his cartwheel. Side step one. Wall combo. Ooh. Oh! Great health delete. Wall splat. This is disgusting. Oh, this is going to hurt. Nina still has heat. He has to survive so many more chip damage. One pixel. Matterhorn! Optimized combo. Crouch cancel down for one. Back to one. Back to one again. Heat burst. What do we get? Four, four, three. Drops the combo on purpose to do this extended. A sidestep. Back turn. Heat smash. He made the comeback. Wow. What? <laughs> that happened so fast. Wow. That's unbelievable. Look at this comeback. One literal pixel. One literal pixel. The Matterhorn actually outspeeds the sidestep one. Nina's sidestep one did not come out yet. Up 3-3, three, three. crouch cancel down 4-1, back 2-1 combo, QCF3, back 2-1 heat burst. He's going to drop the combo on purpose to get the feisty rabbit mix. Arslan stays down, which is really, really smart, but this is where the play gets crazy. 3, Arslan has to punch parry here. No punch parry allows Lily to crouch dash and then sidestep. This sidestep beats Nina's 1-2, Lily gets a back 2-1. And in back turn here, it's a simple heat smash. That was so sick. Yeah, Nina does a 1-2 and gets completely sidestepped. And Pat Loares is like one step ahead in each interaction, right? As soon as this doesn't get punch parried, he's already inputting the sidestep. So he's crouch dashing. This is a built into the string if you hold forward. Already inputting sidestep to dodge the 1-2 and he's already doing the attack. So clutch. How does Arslan drop the punch parry? He, I don't think he's prepared. Um, Pakistan doesn't have Lily players like that. So he doesn't have the matchup specific knowledge. And I think that's why. Like I've talked to Arslan a bit about uh, Lily. So understandably frustrated. Like he, look at like, like you guys are saying like he's frustrated. What would you feel in this situation? Don't pretend that you wouldn't be mad losing this situation. <laughs> like, what are we talking about? What are we talking about? From this position, are we going to pretend that we're not upset? Let's be so real. Let's be so real, bro. This is basically as bad as it gets. Literally one HP. Look at this combo again. Incredible. This situation, I'm stealing that. This back turn heat smash. That was so, so sick. So it's never over until it's over. Tons of interactions to take one round of Tekken 8. Uh, Lily is kind of the exception. She won very few interactions there. But for real, Kudans did it earlier here. He was in a horrible situation and he made an insane comeback. So when you feel like the round is gone and it's doomed, just think about the next play.
You can't worry about how you got here. You can't worry about what your opponent's doing outside of you outplaying them. Right? You don't have to worry about how stupid what they're doing is, how good what they're doing is. You just make the play to kill them. That's all that matters. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Uh, this is a lesson I needed to learn too. So I'm going to be studying up on this. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.